So it's about 5.30 in the morning. I've just left home to start my neurosurgery on-call shift at the Royal London Hospital, and it's a 24-hour shift. We're gonna start with handover at 8 a.m., and then we're gonna go all the way through to tomorrow morning. So I'm gonna take you on my journey now and take you through the rest of the day, and hope you enjoy this day in the life of a neurosurgeon on-call. This is the problem with sleepy Saturdays at sleepy little stations. No coffee. So the only good thing about leaving so early to get to work is that you get a completely empty train carriage to yourself. Usually I spend this time commuting to edit brain book videos on my laptop or try and write some publications and so on and so forth, try and catch up with some admin and emails. Um, but some of you may have seen on Instagram recently that my video editing laptop got smashed to pieces. So this morning I'm just going to get my Kindle out and relax and read a book for once. Just heading to Whitechapel Station on the underground to start work and I've had the most important part of the day, which is my first double espresso. The nice thing about Saturdays is the tube isn't absolutely rammed. It's usually a complete rat race down here. So we're in the neurosurgical on call room. Give you a quick guided tour. So, we have got bathroom, shower, toilet, etc. And the obligatory bed. The bed doesn't see a lot of use, although some nights are a bit, I'm not gonna say the Q word, slower than others. And we've got one computer with two screens so we can have a referral up on one screen and then we can have the scans up on another, makes it a bit quicker. And this is probably one of the only working computers um, that we can access that's fast. So I'm just gonna get changed into scrubs now and then go and start the ward round with Hassan, the SHO that you met earlier. And there's quite a few patients to see. Okay, so I'm in scrubs, ready to go. I've got ID cards, Decked phone, this little hot potato is horrendous. This can make or break your on call. It can be relentless and go off constantly. I'm hoping that it will stay slow, but it's the beginning of the day. Doctors in other hospitals and in this hospital are just gearing up again. So I think the referrals will start to come in slow and steady throughout the day. We've got two cases on the emergency operating list that need to be done and we've got an emergency admission from overnight that I need to see again this morning with the SHO and see if they might need an operation as well. When we're on call in the hospital, um, there's usually a consultant on call from home who will come, on, come in for things that I wouldn't be able to handle as a registrar and uh, they're always on hand to give advice if you're stuck in a clinical dilemma or don't really know what to do. And there's me, registrar on call, and there's also an SHO or senior house officer on call um, who would take care of the ward and also help the registrar in the accident and emergency department do procedures and sometimes do some operating as well with the reg on call supervising. We're going to go and see all of the neurosurgery inpatients, do some troubleshooting, make sure they're all well and then wait for referrals. So we finished our ward round at about 11.30 30 maybe 12 o'clock this guy went and got lunch on his own because he's a loser and then I went and got too, lunch <laughs> he was too hungry and couldn't <laughs> wait for me so uh, as penance he's uh, still doing a lot of ward work essentially after the ward round it generates jobs um, that the senior house officer will do we don't have house officers or FY1s in neurosurgery uh, not here in London anyway and He's going to get lots of calls from the wards. We've got, how many patients have we got as inpatients? 52. 52 inpatients. 
So that can generate a lot of work uh, over the course of uh, the day. Uh, the senior house officers do eight till eight shifts, sometimes stay a lot later, especially Hassan because he likes to stay and operate. I've been taking referrals on our online referral system. I take referrals from all over North and East London. Bart's Health NHS Trust is probably the largest trust in uh, the United Kingdom, if not Europe, five hospitals. Um, and we have a catchment of 2.5 million people and more than that to take in trauma from other hospitals from West London as well. So pretty high workload, can get a lot of calls, but thankfully this afternoon has been relatively slow, but we've got some impatients that are getting sick and causing some major problems. So we're trying to deal with that. And we're going to go to the operating theater shortly because the emergency operating theater has just become free from an ear, nose and throat emergency. So we're gonna take a patient to theater and the consultant is coming in to help with that. Well, this is Dr. Alezito, Euro doctor. <laughs> it's one of the best <laughs> in this business, trust me. Oh, high <laughs> praise, high praise indeed. Chapla is the bee's knees. <laughs> She is, she's the queen bee on the ward. I am. You are. <laughs> she's been begging to be on Brain Book for ages and here she is, now she's acting all shy. Tell <laughs> me, am. Chapla, is it difficult being a sister on 12V? No. No? No. Do we have patient information on the screen? No, we don't. No, we don't. No, we don't. There we go. <laughs> What's the best part of working on 12V, other than getting to spend time with me? Um. <laughs> 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 Being on 12 is the best part. I think it's the best ward in the hospital. I I've got no so bias, too. obviously. Of but. course, there's no bias there at all. Why would there be? No, of course not. Well, so, so well you cover 12F, 12E, outliers, ITU, and you're calling us the best ward. Yeah, of so. course, right? Of course. Yeah, there's no bias there. So, what, so what's your favourite part of 12E? The whole of 12E. The whole of 12E. Yes. Oh. Is it so? What's the worst part about working with neurosurgeons? They're lazy. <laughs> well, how are we lazy? So look what I have to put up with. Look well, what we not, have to put up with. We're not lazy, man. So tell me, tell me. Okay, so what's the best part about working with neurosurgeons? Uh, to be honest, they're, um, you can call them anytime and get them. They're all going off shift now, and the night nursing staff and HCAs are coming in to look after the patients overnight. Isn't that right? That is correct. And you're doing the rota for... I'm where? just checking the staffing. You're checking the staffing for tonight. That's a perpetual problem in hospitals, especially big major trauma centers like here. Staffing can sometimes be an issue, but it's never unsafe. So it's now about uh, 10.40 and it's been a pretty busy day. Uh, we've had a few admissions, done a couple of emergency operations and what I'm going to do now is just catch up with the emergency referrals through our online system and uh, go and do a quick run around on the patients that I admitted during the day, make sure they're still all right and uh, catch up with the nurses looking after those patients too. Um, and I'm also... Oh! Got to answer this. So that was an accident and emergency referral that I just took uh, about a patient with um, back and leg pain that might be secondary to a intervertebral disc. So that's one of the discs in the spine that might be compressing one of the nerves. But looking at the scans, it doesn't look like there's a role for a neurosurgeon to intervene. So accident and emergency are gonna admit the patient for pain management. So I was about to show you something really cool, which is the view from the neuro high dependency unit, which is one of the most beautiful views of London that I think I've seen. So it's nearly midnight now and we've got a new emergency case that we need to do. Um, we've been trying to get into the emergency theatre but it looks like the general surgeons have pipped us to it um, with some horrible complex abdominal surgery that needs to be done. Um, I think they're going to send for our patient which means calling up to the ward to get the patient uh, hopefully in about 45 minutes. Uh, which means it will probably start operating at about 1, 1 in the morning and probably be done by about 3 o'clock. Um, so I will keep you updated 
otherwise I'm um, still going through referrals on our online referral system, still getting phone calls probably about four or five an hour with new referrals from accident and emergency departments um, across the Trust and across North and East London and um, going to try and keep on top of things, keep the system going and um, maybe even lie down for a minute. Let's see. So the patient eventually got to the operating theatre at about 2 o'clock, no, 1.30 and uh, had to stop everything because there was something called an advanced trauma call down in A&E Recess um, which meant that everything had to stop, theatre had to stop in case the patient needed emergency neurosurgery intervention or for the general surgeons to do or trauma surgeons to operate as well. Um, thank, well, the patient's not in a good way but doesn't need emergency surgery right now so they're happy for us to go ahead so we're going to start operating in a minute. As predicted it's about 2.15 we're finally in the operating theatre getting stuff ready to do our emergency case and uh, just making sure the patient's ready to get on the operating table and after this probably try and wind down. Right so it's about 4.30 in the morning we've just finished operating and then the emergency department put out something called a code black call which is for a neurosurgical emergency and that's when a patient presents sometimes or usually via the uh, HEM service with a drop in their conscious level and a blown pupil which means that there's a brain injury that's sufficiently bad um, that the brain has been compressed and they might need emergency neurosurgery. We ended up starting the operation at about 7.30 in the morning and it was a patient with an acute subdural hematoma that we evacuated through a craniotomy. That time of the morning is quite difficult because we're preparing for handover at 8 in the morning where all of the day teams come in and get handover from the night SHO and registrar. The day on-call reg came to the operating theatre and took handover from me and after I finished at about 10 o'clock in the morning I called the consultant on call and let them know what was pending from the past 24 hours and if there were any patients coming over for emergency assessment or surgery. After that, get home, go to bed for a couple of hours, try and normalise and then go to sleep at the normal time that evening and then uh, get ready for my next on-call shift or normal shift. The end of a 24-hour on-call shift at the Royal London Hospital and I hope you enjoyed the trip and learnt a little bit along the way. Remember, if you want to watch more videos like this, don't forget to subscribe to us on YouTube. See you with the next video.